Sunshine Law by adopted prior to January 10th of this year, a resolution prescribed the date, time, and location of all regular commission. This meeting is one of the meetings listed in such resolution. The copies of the resolution were prior to January 10th, while tomorrow. Uh, Commissioner Robinson is not here this evening. She has work commitment. Uh, you know that? Oh. Motion file. Second. And then we have the proclamation for gun violence awareness. Is there anyone who should have been signed? Is there anybody? There's nobody here. Who, 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 okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. We have second is the public hearing of order 1783 appropriating $250,000 from general capital improvement fund for improvements to various municipal roads. Uh, pretty self explanatory. Anyone who'd like to? Uh, so I'll look hearing on it. Anyone want any comments, questions for the commission? Okay. Uh, Mayor Malley? Yes. Mr. Lewiaski? Yes. Okay, we have the first reading of Ordinance 1784, uh, COA non resident development fees. So this is um, something that actually uh, most towns have had a uh, an ordinance on the book for collection of what they call non residential. Uh, Development fees uh, for affordable housing for like those decades. Uh, we never had one because uh, we don't get much new commercial construction at all ever. Um, and we just recently had the uh, the self storage facility on the other side of what used to be the Collingswood Circle has been built, and under the state law that. Uh, that's required to make a payment of this non residential uh, development fee. So, we're creating the ordinance that sets up the fund, the account basically, for us to accept that money. Uh, that money is then um, going to be available to be used uh, to assist affordable uh, housing components of any developments that we have in town. Uh, one that we have now is the Presbyterian Church uh, that. That's going to have an affordable component, and then the um, the water tower development. However, that ends up going if it's residential, will have um, a component that's affordable as well. This money would be available to help those projects conclude that affordable. Um, so, this is the first reading. Public hearing will be at our June three meeting. Uh, okay. Uh, Mayor Malley. Yes. Mr. Yes. yes. We have the first reading of Sewer Capital Ordinance 1785, the completion of development, completion of the Department of Public Works building. So this is taking $350,000 from within the sewer uh, operating budget from the capital allocation of the sewer budget and dedicating it to additional work on uh, the Public Works building, which I don't know everybody gets down on Route 130, but if you're driving by on Route 130, you can see uh, the construction going on there. Uh, public hearing on this one will be at our June meeting as well. Well, wow. Mayor Mallet? Yes. 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 We have the first reading of Ordinance 1786, and then we have section 283, and then it's the code of our own college for the removal and replacement of trees on private property. So this is uh, an ordinance that's required under state law. Um, the DDP has adopted um, uh, regulated adopted statutes that require every municipality to adopt uh, a tree removal um, and replacement ordinance. This ordinance has um, is uh, 
uh, is based on the model ordinances that they've issued with some provisions from our shade tree commission. Uh, there's a the shade tree commission has, has given us a few comments on it, but uh, our, we're kind of past our deadline already. We're going to introduce this ordinance. Uh, it would be adopted at the June meeting with an understanding that none of this stuff is cast in stone. We'll see how this goes uh, over time. This regulates um, private property owners' removal of trees on their property and puts requirements on them for replacement of those trees for payment of a fund into a uh, payment into a fund that's a community kind of town uh, trees. So we're going to introduce you. Anything you want to add? Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's this new territory, um, the idea. We've always sort of along sort of the county strip, you know, borough always had control over it. Um, so this is, this is a new territory. I think in the grand scheme of things, it's a good thing that we sort of are, are aware of and, and keep our tree canopy uh, flourishing, healthy, strong, and that we can in areas of development and growth that we sort of replace things on a one to one or one basis. So that's okay. Uh, Mary yes. Yeah. Maybe a public comment on resolution. So, so public yeah. hearing will be in June at the June meeting is the second reading of the public hearing. And that's okay. when people can talk. Yeah, but yeah. there's also yeah. at the yeah. end of the meeting at the end of the meeting you can talk about it as well. Yeah, yeah. sure. The, this this is um, this now is opportunity. Anyone has any comments on the rest of the agenda on the agenda items only? At the end of this, we'll open it up. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Anything? Any comments? Questions on the agenda items? Okay, we have the acceptance of the twenty twenty three audit and it's, and signing of the group affidavit. So this is our audit. Um, congratulations to thanks to Betty Joe and to all of our um, all of our um, borough staff for turning in another good audit. Um, that we don't there's not a requirement we have discussion about, it, right? This is just like a week. That's the good the, 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 what good practices. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. Appointing. Timothy Parducci as part time EMT firefighter for the college fire department. Yes. Yes. Appointing Grant Morgan as part time EMT firefighter for the college and fire department. Yes. Appointing class one special law enforcement officers Justin Kaysen and Chase Corey. Yes. yes. Awarding the professional service contract to Tiffany Cavella. Um, for affordable house. For affordable house. Yes. 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 Appointing Marlene Grant to the Collins with Historic Advisory Board. Yes. Yes. Authorizing the open bank accounts at Park Bank. Yes. yes. Okay, we have the following out of chapter 159, we have to approve a wide of revenue. Uh, recycling tonnage grant, constructed riding the crackdown, RGGI grant for the BB truck, and resurfacing of Barfield Avenue. So the, these are simply approving uh, the receipt of grant money and setting up a, uh, a line in the budget to spend that money on what the, the grant's purposes are. That's all it says. Yes. Yes. Authorizing the award of an emergency contract to Garrison Enterprises Incorporated for water repairs. Yes. yes. Uh, authorizing to award uh, an award to Earl Asphalt Company for the NJ DOT project for the resurfacing of Warfield Avenue. Yes. Uh, awarding a contract to National Auto Fleet Group. Uh, it's a national co op for an electric vehicle. Yes. yes. The DPW vehicle, right? DPW truck that is in or is it coming in? Not uh, yet. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, authorizing the ratification of an award of an emergency contract for water repairs and having for AC Schulte. Yes. yes. Authorizing an application to the Camden County Open Space Farmland Recreation and Historic Trust for the 2024 Recreation Facility Enhancement Project, Roberts School. Yes. yes. Authorizing to enter into an agreement with the state of New Jersey for the purpose of the Route 30 Cooper Street to Grove, to Grove Street Camden County Project. Yes. Yes. This is for um, 
increased police enforcement and all the white horse pride, right? That's no, this is hit with the bigger, yeah. Reserve, it's like, yeah, this oh, is okay. this the re reserve I'm, thing. So it's going to be several towns. It's going to be high and open land and going down, I think, all the way into maybe even like Summerdale and stuff, right? Um, you know, we're at particular interest in stressing, uh, especially pedestrian safety measures uh, in, in our area as well. So, yes. Yes. Authorizing the acceptance of federal funds to participate in the federal grant program, Safety Secure Communities Grant. Yes. yes. Authorizing an MOU for the borough. Uh, Authorizing an MOU between the borough of Collinswood for the Water Tower area project. Uh, Tatum or Tatum? 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 Yes. Tantrum. 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 Yes. Tantrum. So this is the, the this is the uh, the borough's gone through a process of accepting in proposals from um, from developers for development of kind of the public works facility, public police stations, in fact, these back parking lot by the water towers. Um, we got got in seven proposals, I, I believe. Um, We've gone through a process in house of reviewing them and have selected a developer. Tantum De Deborah uh, Tarnum is the uh, is the principal, uh, and we're um, we're going to be begin working with uh, Deborah and her company. Um, we're intrigued. It's a residential, um, a market rate residential, and also a senior affordable component on the project. Um, we have scheduled. We scheduled a couple of meetings. One is on May 29 and another one in June to um, begin a, our, our public input process, kind of the same way we did with the public uh, safety building, where we you know kind of had some concepts and some ideas, and then we started all the meetings with uh, the neighborhood and also with just the public in general that fine-tuned and made changes, updated it, uh, and we think made it come out really, really good. So. That's um, that's what this is tonight. This is having it posted escrow to cover the borough's um, cost of negotiation with them, and, um, and we're on the path. On yeah. the next step. And the only other thing I would add is um, borough staff did a great job of putting a lot of uh, information online. All seven of the proposals uh, are on there. There's some history and some, uh, you know. Some documents and, and other great information. I, I hear about people reading it and they have a lot of questions and stuff, which I appreciate it's exactly what's there to be. And I uh, hope people can uh, share their thoughts and uh, uh, with us so we can make it the best project that it can be. Yes. Yes. Authorizing uh, an award for professional service contract with Spizal Architect Group for the Pocket Park. Yes. yes. I think we missed the change order of McDonald's. Yeah, that's 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 the awesome. And all right, the change orders McDonald's company for the construction of the DBW building. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And approving the payment bills and general water and sewer payments. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two things I wanted to mention. First of all, uh, if you haven't had a chance, we have a kind of advisory for health. Um, actually, we started during COVID and uh, continues to uh, to be um, online at Collinswood.com. I think actually also available in the library are uh, our, our resident surveys, and this is really helpful to us to get you know feedback on um, you know, thoughts, the ideas, and behaviors uh, around uh, around things in public health. So um, please. June 1st, I think, is the deadline. So if you can, please take that survey. More people will take it. More information you can get would be really helpful. Um, this Saturday was the 25th anniversary of uh, the opening of the farmer's market. And uh, congratulations and thank you to all the volunteers, the staff that, that, made, you know, that makes it so successful. One thing that was really special this year is that we had uh, all the past uh, directors uh, were there. So Pam Servo and so Celia Hatz were there, Ms. Cook, David Hodges, and our current director, uh, Kim Goodman. And it's really fantastic to hear the stories 
folks had in the, you know, Pam and Sylvia who would drive down to Salem County and meet with farmers and sort of negotiate them coming up here. And, you know, farmers markets were not a big thing 25 years ago. And there were a lot of incredulous uh, farmers. Uh, and um, um, to see where we're at now, to see the vibrancy, to see the amount of folks that are there is, uh, is a great thing. It's a testament to the hard work of so many people. So, congratulations. Uh, I already mentioned about the, uh, the, the water tower development. So, it'll be sometime. Yeah. And I want to piggyback on the uh, you know, 25 years of success of the farmer's market, uh, dependent upon volunteers from, from the first. From the beginning, when Pam and Sylvia came and sat down and said, we'd like to do this, and the work that they did as volunteers um, is what made it, it's what makes it run today. Um, and, and I want to emphasize, at the end of this month is our big festival, the May Fair. Um, does not run, does not run without volunteers. Uh, and we need volunteers. We need people to help on every little bit of it. We need you to get involved in it. Uh, as I have said a number of times now, doing this, sitting at home is not volunteer. Uh, you need to come out, get involved, do a little something, email, contact the borough, email me, email Rob, let us know you'd like to get involved. We'll be happy to get you involved. But we really need people to help on this. Uh, it is a... Um, monumental undertaking uh, and we need all the people that we can get the help. Can I, will, I, can I just add to that? Yeah, yeah I, I will say we, we recently just had a you know, sort of thank you event for, 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 for our volunteers. It's really fantastic. And one of the things that I heard from a couple of folks is that they don't volunteer as individuals. They, they go organize their own crew folks. So sometimes it's, it's they're part of the church and, and they decide to make this part of their service. Uh, um, and sometimes it's just a bunch of friends and neighbors and say, let's do it together and do some cool stuff. So um, sometimes, uh, you know, the idea of doing this alone feel a little uncomfortable or something like that. Bring friends, bring a bunch of friends. And, uh, you know, um, come be, in, be involved and in you'll, you'll appreciate it. And you know, the, the, the thing I remember most from the, the volunteer thing the other night is people saying to me, gee, I'm involved in like three different things. I'm not really sure what I got invited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's just, that's just kind of a sign of like, it's the same people doing a lot of stuff. So uh, we encourage you to get involved. Okay. All right, we're going to open it up to the public. Anyone like anything like to say? You can lead off. I, I only read it. Keep your name and address for the record. Eric Ryan Hagler, 503 Whiting Wood Pike. Uh, I only read the ordinance really quickly here, but it, it looks like anybody who takes down a tree illegally under the new tree ordinance will be fined $2,000. That's how I'm reading that. Is that no, it's, right? it's, it's, a, it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, but it, what, what it does, and I'm not going to go, I, I can't tell you, I know every detail of it. Okay, but it is, there's a requirement to get, uh, to file an application to get permission to remove I, a tree on private property. I, I understand all that. What happens if somebody doesn't abide by that and just cuts down the tree? Yeah. What are you going to do? It, says it looks like you're going to find the person $2,000 for doing it. Well, there's, ex there's exclusions, there's exceptions. So we'll we'll see. As this is working out, we'll see. I, I, I personally think two thousand dollars is a good pittance. Somebody if somebody cuts down a hundred year old tree and they get fined two thousand dollars when they own an eight hundred thousand dollar house, what the hell do they care about two thousand dollars? It's going to cost them more to cut down the tree. Let's see, let's see I, I would just like to avoid my opinion that okay. that tree <laughs> that they're going to cut down is worth a lot more than the two thousand dollars that you're going to have to afford. Okay. We, okay. we watched all the huge trees at Northview that were four feet deeper, and we cut down last year. And on the corner of Browning, and you need to if you need you, you need to give your name and address. I mean, Brian, I mean, Brian. Then that was why it was just very sad for us to see these two huge trees that were probably 100, 150 years old in front of that White House on the corner of Collins and Browning. And they had the right to cut them down because I'm going to fall on it on the little piece of grass. And then right across the street from us, we watched park and you saw down trees that were at least four feet wide, four and a half feet wide, healthy, gorgeous trees. Yeah. 
I'll have no, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that people will complain that uh, the the government is going to be telling them that the tree in their backyard they're not allowed to cut down. Uh, oh, absolutely. That's a that's a pretty big that's step. That's absolutely true. So, although the state is mandating us to do this, well, it, yeah, yeah. They are. Yeah, it's good business, right? For the uh, uh, as we live in Tadfield, people over there are complaining at their council meetings about excess water runoff, storm water runoff, and that's what they're complaining this, about it here. So, like, like, so like, like, so like, so to help storm water runoff, right? Isn't that what the uh, state mandated? Well, yeah, that's why the state is asking us to do this. Yeah, so so we've introduced we've introduced the ordinance. We'll see how this all goes. Okay, because it's new for well, it's not new for everybody. Some towns have had something like this for a while. Okay, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah, it goes for us. We tried it out on some people we know who were more conservative. They thought it was horrible that they don't think they're telling the white people like no problem. And I accept a lot of that. Yeah. Um, be my guest too. I appreciate, but I, I freaking yeah. be back. Yeah. I think it's something we need to be mindful of. I don't want to come across as tree hoggers downstairs. No, I haven't tree hoggers, but I don't think the ordinance would come across that way. It's coming across as this is being done for a practical reason to help storm water. I, I will say the other part of this is that, you know, the onus will be on us to communicate it out. To make sure that residents are very clear about what the responsibility is. Yes. We don't want to get to the point that someone erroneously, accidentally, purposely, you know, does it. We want them to understand what the expectation is. So hopefully, what we can do is that people are a little more thoughtful before they do things. And and if they have to, sometimes you do, is that at least we have a plan on how to regenerate and to sort of. You know, things are reinvested into our trees. So, so thank you, thank you for for You got it. anyone else? Folks, yep. Name and address for the record. Joan Leonard, seven fifty nine Hadley. <laughs> Three things. One is Arbor Day went so nicely. So thank you to the borough for bigger, better trees and Public Works for digging these gargantuan holes for these trees, and the children were thrilled and. I think it's our 30th year of planting with the children that was started. The Arbor Day celebration was started with the Horticultural Club. That's how far back it goes. And then we adopted it as a borough with our own ordinances and budget and protection. So here we are really about 30 years later and about 3000 trees later. So the borough has done great work in educating children and giving that enthusiasm for taking care of Knight Park and the trees. So it went really well. So thank you to Steve and the crew for that, for Arbor Day um, again. And then um, the Green Festival went really well. And I want to say thank you to all of the people who helped. We had a lot of volunteers from the community gardeners to the shade tree folks to the sustainability people. And um, police and public works there too. So the day went well, so thank you to that, to continue to promote um, all of the things that the borough stands by for the environment, including uh, composters and rain barrels and you know pollinator friendly plants. So that went well, so that's two. And third is um, thank you for beginning to pass this ordinance. It's not strong enough for me, but nothing is. So I understand that. Um, and I think that we, the Shade Tree Board is very committed to working together with the borough to try to look at particulars and kind of flush them out to see which would really be applicable or not to our little town with little parcels of land. Um, and I think you mentioned education and how it rolls out and that's gonna be really important. I think to let people know um, that when a tree comes down their basement's flooding, but so is everyone else's. So it really makes a big impact on nature. And I think that, you know, we maybe the shade tree group could work with the borough to try to really get the word out and move this forward. I'm really happy that we have an ordinance that protected our trees for all this time on the curb strips. I think as the DEP instructed all municipalities to have this ordinance, 
many municipalities did not have tree protection or a budget or instruction on the um, the tree lawns, the curbside trees. Mm -hmm. So we are we are uh, 1997 to now way ahead of the game with that. So this just gives us to the next level because that's probably not enough. So that's you know why they're saying that. But I am proud of our borough for being so far ahead in that that we did not need to be told how important it is to preserve our neighborhoods through our tree lined streets. So thank you. Joe, so really thank, thank you, you because my pleasure. All over this stuff. And thank you. We're, I think we're all very great. And my guess is you were at that first Armor Day celebration, I guess. Me? Yeah. yeah I think I was up a tree. Yeah. <laughs> all right, anyone else? Yes. Uh, Russell Perry Jackson, the firm manager. I'm wondering what on um, what priority list and we're on priority list the painting of Mabel <clears throat> from Fern down to West Washington on down to Collins. Was the, the amount of traffic that used those streets I don't know if you call it one piece, but basically section has been done nicely the post office. It's standard amount of traffic being made. Standard, where we? It's probably somewhere in the middle of the class. We do have an asset management priority list in Maple. Probably not there's road work in Maple, I'll put it that way. If we were going to rank at least we did it. So, so I don't know. I don't know if you remember about this asset management. We worked with Rowan University, the College of Engineering, College of Engineering, and our own engineers um, on sort of evaluating every inch of every roadway and sort of putting in their fancy engineering and number crunching stuff to sort of evaluate based on traffic and condition. You know, a prioritization list now. You just don't do it all totally on that technical. Sometimes you have to make decisions to put things ahead uh, of others. But uh, it's a really helpful tool for the borough to have that kind of information to make decisions. So uh, I just I bring it up because I don't know if you remember we started probably two years ago, past, right? Yeah, it took a while to get to get things. But uh, so when we talk about that list, that asset inventory sort of coming out of that. So it's not top, it's not bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yes, Mr. Klingerman. 743 Maple Terrace. There's a lot of traffic on Maple Avenue there, or you have an event on Adna Avenue. Mm -hmm. And there's sometimes it's bumper to bumper down the street. Really? And there are places there really tore up pretty bad. No, we're aware. I know. And then listen, we're not saying it's in great shape. We're just saying that there are other roads that are worse. That's all. The other, the other thing I'll say, right, sometimes uh, there are, sometimes, especially in the spring, bottle season and stuff like that, there are things we're not aware of. So if there are specific things, please call it in uh, on the website. Uh, Anything like that because sometimes we don't know your your eyes and ears as well. That might not affect curve curve general conditions, but but I mention it because sometimes there are easy fixes to the smaller problems. There's one place there at Washington and Maple Avenue where there's a rain taken that no water goes in there because it's sitting so hot. Okay. You're um, I just want to also kind of throw my support behind the uh, the tree ordinance, um, and uh, would like to, you know, just express that this is a a big 
step for the state. Um, it's great to see the state. I mean, I don't, I know there's a couple of towns and cities throughout the country that have done this, but seeing the whole state do it, um, it's a big deal. And I just, you know, think making sure that people are informed about why it's being done against stormwater, I know is the, the driving issue. Um, and, you know, we regulate in this town and every town and city, we regulate lots of things that goes on private property, things that are merely aesthetic. These are much more than aesthetic, obviously. There's, you know, what then when someone cuts down the tree, it affects all of us around them. So I think making sure people are informed about why this is being done um, would really help and, you know, look forward to hopefully. We don't, we're all bored. We don't disagree with you. Just yeah. And when you, when it's a, it's a change. What? No, I'm, I'm, here, change. Yeah, I'm here to support so not you, to, not okay, to it. Okay, it'll be in the fall. Come by in the fall when it's filled with the people that got told about. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting on, getting on the record. I, you know, I will say the side is perfectly explained. And Joan, you're the one that taught me this, but with so much rainwater in my backyard sometimes, it's going, hey, you're the one that taught me about willows. And how they just gobble up water, and so now I'm working on a plan to plant some willows in the backyard because mm -hmm. Joel taught me that. Good try. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anybody? Okay. All right. Thanks. See you thanks in all. June.